Okay, today we're going to be looking at the second part of 4.1, which is on radian and degree measure. So what we did last time is we left off converting between degree and radian measures. Um, even though degrees are like super tiny, um, they can be taken a step further by measuring angles in even smaller parts of a degree. So just like an hour is divided into 60 minutes and each minute is divided into 60 seconds, a degree also can have the same qualities. So one degree is the same as 60 minutes. One minute is the same as 60 seconds. So when we think about those as conversion factors, the idea that one degree is the same as 60 minutes and that one minute is the same as 60 seconds, we can see that if we wanted to see how many seconds are in one degree, we have one degree over 3,600 seconds, and that's how we end up with that conversion factor there. So what we want to do is use our calculator to help us convert from degrees, minutes, seconds to degrees. Um, and we have this right here, 125 degrees, 32, that's read as minutes, and 51 seconds. So the first thing that we want to do is enter this into the calculator. We're going to make sure that we have these symbols, degrees, minutes, and seconds. And so to get the degree symbol, you're going to go to seconds, and then the apps key. which takes you to the angle menu. So notice that if we do, um, clear this out, if we do second and then, oops, you can't see my finger. <laughs> this apps that's right here, that gives us the angle menu. And you can see degrees is right here. Notice that the minutes is also there in that second apps, which brings us to the angle menu. But to get to the seconds, um, the seconds is located um, here above the plus. So you're going to have to hit alpha plus to get to the, um, you're going to have to hit, sorry, yeah, alpha plus to get to the um, seconds. So to enter this into the calculator, we would take, and again, you can just practice, so 125, and then I'm going to hit second um, to get to the angle menu, and then I'm going to hit 32 minutes, so again, second angle number two, the second apps to get to the angle menu number two, and then 51 seconds. So alpha plus. And so now it's into the calculator. And then all we need to do is just press enter. And it'll convert it for us. So again, just press enter. And now we have the equivalent in just degrees. So we see that this is equivalent to um, 125.5475 degrees. I know we usually round, but it's like just one extra decimal, so I'll just keep it in there. Okay. So the next question wants us to convert from decimal to degrees, minutes, seconds. Now, one thing to be aware of, however, is I want you to notice that this is not currently in degrees. When we don't see a unit, this is in radians. So before we use any of the conversion factors on the calculator, we should definitely convert to degrees first. And we looked at how to do that the other day. And to convert from radians to degrees, we can take the radians and multiply by the conversion factor of 180 over pi, 180 degrees over pi radians. And so if I put 0.6875 times 180 oops, over pi, um, I'll just round to three decimal places to get started, okay? So 
about 45.063 is what I'll write down. So 45.063 degrees. Now I'm going to leave that in my calculator and not clear it off. Um, but now I'm going to use the features of the calculator to help me convert that to degrees, minutes, and seconds. So again, what we'll do is we'll use our calculator, and we're going to go to Second Apps, again, to get to the Angle menu. And then we're going to find it number four. And number four has this little arrow to convert to DMS which means it will convert to degrees, minutes, seconds for us. So let's try that. Now that we have this value in our calculator, let's do second apps to get to the angle menu. And then number four converts it to degrees, minutes, seconds. We just press enter. And we can see that this is going to be 45 degrees, three minutes, and 47.27 seconds. We usually just round to the nearest second. If you put the 27 in there, it's fine. But that would be our conversion. Um, once again this year, um, the directions for 67 to 77 do say to use the angle conversion capabilities that we just looked at in the graphing calculator. Um, that's fine, okay, because there's enough going on this year already. Um, you can do it by hand if you're like, well, how would I do it by hand? Well, all we would do is we would convert um, the seconds to minutes and then the minutes to degrees. And then likewise, we would like chop off the decimal part and turn those into of the degrees and turn those into minutes and seconds. But I double checked and um, the BC Calc teacher says that they never really see anything like that. So using the graphing calculator is okay. All right. So also remember from our previous lesson that there's a relationship between the arc length, the radius, and the angle measurement. Um, and yesterday we defined that as theta equals s over r. And one thing to make sure of is that your theta has to be in radians in order to use this formula and any of the formulas that we're going to look at well, these next two formulas at least, okay? So one formula I want us to look at is the idea of the arc length. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just find um, any angle theta. I'm going to make it smaller than a radian so that you don't think it has to be a radian. And this is r, our radius. And from here to here on the arc, on the circle, this right here is our arc length. And so our arc length, if we use this formula, can also be given as theta times r or r times theta. It's commutative, it doesn't matter. But that's how we can find our arc length. And then Let's differentiate that with when we still will have the same little theta and we have this r right here, but that we're looking at this whole piece here. Notice that this is a shaded piece, so this is the area of a sector. What we're doing here is we would be looking for this particular area. And when we talk about the area of a sector, the area of a sector is one half r squared theta. Again, to use these formulas, it has to be in radians for, in order for you to use those formulas. Okay. So here's our formula for arc length, and here's our formula for area. So let's take a look at um, example three and how we could use this. Um, example three says that a circle has a radius of four inches and it wants the length of the arc intercepted by a central angle of 240 degrees. 
Well, I noticed that they give me a central angle of 240 degrees, but one thing we just said is that our theta has to be in radians in order for us to use that. So we're going to change this to radians. And if we're not familiar with what 240 degrees is equivalent to yet, it is a special value on the unit circle, but I know we haven't reviewed that quite yet. We can re remember convert by multiplying by pi over 180 degrees. And so our um, degrees cancel out. And we get 240 pi over 180, which is going to be that pi, 4 pi over 3. So now we want to know which formula to use. Well, they're looking here for the length of the arc. And so the length of the arc is going to be using this formula, that S, the arc length, equals theta, the angle, times the radius R. So we have S equals, and then in for theta, I can put that 4 pi over 3. And notice it says that my radius is 4 inches, so I can put that here. And then we just put those together. So we have that 16 pi over 3 inches would be an exact answer. And if you want, you could put that in your calculator. Um, and you could just put 16 pi, divide that by 3. That would give us about 16.755 inches. So exact answer would be 16 pi over 3 inches if it wanted us to round we could do um, about 16.755 inches, three decimal places. Um, let's also look at this for example four. Um, this is kind of, I wish I was here with you guys, um, it's kind of hard to visualize. What we're trying to do is looking at points on the earth like apart from each other. And so because the earth is circular, we can say that they are separated like by a certain arc length. So the arc length would be the distance between those two cities. Um, so they're talking about that here. Miami, Florida and Erie, Pennsylvania lie approximately on the same meridian, which is the longitude line. Um, so Miami has a latitude of 25 degrees, 46 minutes, 32 seconds north. And Erie has a latitude of 42 degrees, 7 minutes and 33 seconds north. Find the distance between these two cities if the radius of the Earth is 4,000 miles. Um, and so I guess what I would um, invite you to think about is, again, like this is the Earth, okay? But pretend, like, I know it's flat and the Earth's not really flat, but, you know. So the Earth, it says that the radius is 4,000 miles. And it's just saying that it's on the same... Um, longitude line and then so basically like um, it's just going to be kind of a difference in the circle um, as far as where it goes here so like let's say that Erie Pennsylvania is going to be farther north right so let's make Erie Pennsylvania live here and then uh, Miami Florida is going to be farther south than that so we'll make Miami live here. And what we're looking for is we're looking for the distance, essentially, between E, Erie, and M, Miami. And so look at this, you guys. This is really a sector. And so what we could do is if we knew this angle measurement, we could use the arc length formula. Well, the way that we can find that is we can find theta by subtracting our latitudes. So we can take 42 degrees, 7 minutes, and 33 seconds, and subtract 25 degrees, 46 minutes, and 32 seconds. And that's something you can do on the calculator. That's fine, just with the information that we looked at. If you need to pause, go ahead and pause. But when you subtract, you should get um, about 16.3503 degrees. Um, so I didn't keep it in degrees, minutes, seconds, because in order to use this formula, I'm going to have to use 
um, a radian measurement anyway. And so since um, I need to use a radian measurement anyway, um, I'm not going to convert it to degree, keep it in degrees, minutes, seconds, just to flip it back to degrees, just to flip it to radian. So speaking of that, I do want to change this to radian. And so I can change it to radians by taking my result and multiplying it by pi over 180 degrees. And again, you can just punch that right into the calculator. Press pause if you need to. And when we do that, we should get about 28.2854. So that's talking about this angle that's right here, okay? That's this angle that's between Erie, Pennsylvania and Miami, Florida. Remember that if the radius of the Earth is 4,000 miles, that means that every radius is 4,000 miles, right? So this is 4,000 miles from here to here and from here to here also. And so now we have a radius and we have our theta. And so now we can just use, because again, we want the distance between the cities, is we can use this idea of S, the arc length, because essentially, like if you think about it on the Earth, that's what we're doing when we're traveling from city to city, um, is gonna be equal to theta times R. And so we have an estimate of theta of about 2.2854. We know that our radius is about 4,000 miles. And so that means that our arc length, um, if you multiply those together, we get 1,141.465. And our radius was in miles, so our arc length will also be in miles, okay? All right, um, so next question, instead of just finding the arc length, asks us to find the area. This wants us to find the area of the sector um, determined by a 100 degree central angle. And so when we're doing the area of the sector, remember that this is going to be A equals 1 half R squared theta. But again, the issue is that we can only use theta when it's in radians. So we're going to change this to radians. And so we'll take the 100 degrees, multiply by pi over 180, And when I do that, I get about 1.7453. Um, it is going to be best just to keep as much in the calculator as possible. I should have said that in example four. So when you take 100 times pi over 180 and we get this value, again, that's a nice thing to either store or get your second answer or whatnot. Okay. Um, so if we substitute this into the formula, we have one half, we can see that our R is seven, and then our theta is going to be this value here, this 1.7453, but I'm just gonna leave whatever was in the calculator. You know, so that means that when I punch that in, that I'm gonna take one half times seven squared times whatever that answer was, and that just helps to make sure that I have the most accurate information. Um, so that gives me an answer of an area of about 42.761, and it didn't give us a unit, so square units, okay? If I had just done um, the point, what did we say? Oops, 1.7453. Um, again, it's not that big of a difference, but it does give you a difference to the nearest thousandth in rounding. So just be careful as you can. Okay. 
Example six is kind of what we just did in example four, but working backward. Um, this time they give us um, the radius in kilometers instead of in miles. And it says, assume the Earth is a sphere of radius 6,378 kilometers. What is the difference in latitude of two cities, one of which is 800 kilometers due north of the other? Well, let's think back to what we said about our Earth. Now, this time we're thinking about our, um, well, our radius in kilometers instead. So this is really 6,000. 378 kilometers. And it's talking about being um, 800 kilometers due north of the other. So if we're talking about being 800 kilometers due north of the other, that's just saying like on, and this is not to scale, that this arc length is going to be the 800 kilometers. That's really what they mean. So due north to us really means like an arc length as far as the Earth goes, all right? And so it wants to know what the difference in latitude of the two cities is. So this difference in latitude of the two cities is going to be that angle theta. So we can use that formula that S equals theta times R, and this time our S is that 800 kilometers between that arc length. We don't know theta, and our R is 6,378 kilometers. So of course we would divide both sides by 6,378 and we get about 0.1254. And remember that this is in radians. Now one thing you may have noticed back in example four um, is that the um, latitude and long, the, the latitudes were given in degrees, minutes, and seconds. And so even though this is the difference in latitude in radians, so this difference in latitude is our theta, but we need to give this final answer in degrees, minutes, seconds. So that means let's take this 0.1254 in the calculator and let's multiply it by 180 over pi to actually go the other way. And then this gives me about 7.1867 degrees. I know it should be just 0.187 if I'm doing three decimal places. Um, and then just use the calculator to convert to DMS, degrees, minutes, seconds. So remember what we can do is we go to second, apps for the angle menu, and then number four. And that gives us that it's going to be about seven degrees, 11 minutes, and 12 seconds. We can use that conversion. Okay, all right, so the next thing we're going to look at um, are things like linear speed and angular speed. Um, when we talk about linear speed, um, linear speed measures how fast something moves. And then what angular speed does is angular speed measures how fast the angle changes. All right. Um, so example seven says a satellite in a circular orbit of 1,125 kilometers high makes one complete revolution every 100 minutes. What is the linear speed? 
Well, first, let's understand what's going on with this particular picture. Um, what's happening is we have this satellite. Well, okay, we have the Earth, and it's the, and the radius of the Earth is that 6,378 kilometers. And again, this is not too cool. But then we have this satellite that is 1,125 kilometers high, which means that it's going to be an additional 1,125 kilometers around that, right, if it's 1,125 kilometers high. So what that means is that when we're looking at the radius as far as like what the satellite is traveling, we need to add the radius, like if we're looking at the center of the Earth as our center, we look at the radius of the Earth as well as how far away from the surface of the Earth the satellite is. Um, and then that can give us the radius that we want to use. And so this tells us if we add 6378 and 1125, that gives me 7,503 kilometers. And that's what we're going to be using as our radius here. Okay. Um, when we're discussing linear speed, which they ask us for here. When we want linear speed, essentially we're going to take our arc length over time. And so essentially that's going to be like S over T. So linear speed, how fast the particle is moving, is really going to be like our arc length s over our time t. So what is our arc length s? When we think about s, we know that s is theta times r. And we were given r, right? We were given that our radius was 7,000. 503 kilometers. Well, it wasn't given, but we figured it out. So what the heck are we supposed to use for theta in this question? Because it didn't really tell us anything about, um, you know, the number of radians that it was going through. However, one thing that they did allude to is they talked about a revolution. When it talks about one complete revolution, that is giving us a specific theta. One complete revolution is telling us that theta is going to be 2 pi. One complete revolution is going to be 2 pi. And that's really all that they give us in this question. So that's what we're going to have to work with, you guys. And so our arc length is really going to be a complete circumference of this, um, like what the satellite is doing here. So if we find that... If we multiply, um, I'm just going to double the 7503 um, and then stick a pi on the end of it. So our arc length ends up being 15,006 pi kilometers. So again, 15,006 times pi would be the actual value. So now let's use this for this idea of this linear speed. Our linear speed is going to be our arc length over our time. And we found that the arc length in this case was going to be the 15,006 pi kilometers. And the time was actually given to us over here, right, in 100 minutes. So again, that complete revolution, that 2 pi um, arc that we traveled, which was a total distance of 15,006 pi kilometers, happened in 100 minutes. And so then we can just divide the 15,006 pi kilometers 
right? Divided by 100. And we see that our linear speed is going to be about 471.427. And then the unit, of course, is just going to be that kilometers per minute. And that would be my linear speed. So really with linear speed, it's just we're just finding the um, amount that's traveled and then just dividing it by the time. Okay. Let's do one more like this, but also one that can involve the angular speed as well. Um, this says that a car is moving at a rate of 60 miles per hour. Assume that the diameter of the wheel is 2.5 feet. It wants the rotational speed, which I know we didn't mention, and that's just in revolutions per minute. And then we'll look at our angular speed. Um, so let's look at the information they give us. They tell us that the diameter of the wheel is 2.5 feet. That means we can tell our radius is just going to be 1.25 feet. <clears throat> and again, when it talks about rotational speed, um, rotational speed is really in revolutions per minute. Maybe let me look at that. So rotational speed is referring to the number of revolutions, well, per amount of time. And in this case, again, it says revolutions per minute. Um, so what this is telling us about the revolution is, again, that we're going to be looking at this idea of 2 pi as our theta. So let's look at what one revolution is. So one revolution we can use this idea of S equals theta times R, and one whole revolution has an angle measure of 2 pi radians, and the radius we're going to be using is 1.25 feet. So this tells me that one revolution is 2.5 pi feet. So again, this is one revolution. Okay. So if it wants the rotational speed in revolutions per minute, we need to go back to this idea of the original rate, and then we need to play the rate change root game. Okay. So they're telling us that it's 60 miles per hour is how fast this car is going, okay? And one thing that it tells us is that we want it to be in revolutions per minute. Well, one thing that we could do here is we could convert our hours to minutes, right? So one thing that we could do to get it to the minutes is we could say, all right, one hour is equivalent to 60 minutes. And so now I at least have this idea of minutes. But now how am I supposed to change this to revolutions? Well, notice that I have a revolution in feet. Like this is now a new conversion factor that we can use for this question, that one revolution is 2.5 pi feet. So I'm in miles, so what I could do is I could change miles to feet. You guys remember how many uh, feet are in a mile? It's 5,280 feet are in a mile. And so now I have that we have this many feet per minute. And so now I'm going to use this new conversion factor here that I have... Um, let's see, so the feet would be on the bottom, so I could cancel. Oops. So 2.5 pi feet is going to be one revolution. And then now my feet cancel. And now I have the units that I want. I have the revolutions 
per minute. So again, we use this idea that we found as a conversion factor, and then we can multiply from there. So we just multiply everything on the top. Um, so we can put 60 times 5,280, and then divide it by, just make sure we put that in parentheses, 60 times 2.5, Oh, I forgot the pi. <laughs> oh boy. So we'll do 60 times 5,280. Um, and then we're going to divide that by 60 times 2.5 pi. <laughs> it's a good mistake to make though. And that gives us the rotational speed. So our, so our rotational speed is about 672. 0 0.270 revolutions per minute. And again, the reason that we did those um, changes of um, unit was just because they gave us a desired unit of revolutions per minute. Um, so because it gave us this, that's we needed to kind of do those conversions. Okay. Um, so now let's change over to the idea of the angular speed. Now it wants our angular speed in radians per minute. So when we talk about our angular speed, essentially that's just our central angle over time. So our angular speed is really our theta over our time. And that's what we're looking for here. Well, remember that we knew that we had 672.270 revolutions per minute. And we have the minute that we needed, but now we want it in radians. Well, you guys, there's a conversion factor that we can always use. Isn't two pi radians always one revolution? So again, any full circle, any of those revolutions are going to be considered that two pi. And then I see that I can cancel out those units. And I'm going to use this answer that was in the calculator. And I'm going to multiply it by two pi. Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. And that our angular speed ends up being 4,224, and then we have radians per minute. And that's going to be our angular speed. Okay, sorry, someone was at the door. <laughs> All right, um, so a little preview of our next lesson. All right, um, we are going to be looking at that idea of the unit circle. So let's just start by reviewing two special right triangles, the 45, 45, 90 triangle and the 30, 60, 90. When we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle, remember that when we think about the lengths of the sides, um, I remember in geometry when I taught it, I always called this A, A, and A root 2. But what we want when we have a unit circle is we want this radius, well, the hypotenuse, we want that to be the radius, and we want that to end up being 1. And so if we say that a um, root 2 has to be 1, then that means that a has to be 1 over root 2, which we can rationalize into root 2 over 2. So what happens is, is that we end up with special sides, root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, and then a hypotenuse of 1. Remember that that's the case in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, which means that if this is 45 degrees, that this is also true for pi over 4 radians. And so what that tells us, remember, about the unit circle is that when we have a radian measure of pi fourth, the ordered pair on the circle is root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. We'll do this in more detail tomorrow, just kind of planting the seed, okay? 
we know that if you have a 30, 60, 90 triangle that across from the 30 degree angle, we'll call this 30 degrees, okay, which again is going to be the same as pi over 6, okay, um, that we have um, A and then across from the 60 was A root 3 and then across from here was 2A. But again, in the unit circle, we want our radius to be 1. So that means that we're going to have to cut this. If, if 2A is 1, that means that this A is really 1 half. And if A is 1 half, 1 half times root 3 is root 3 over 2. And so that means that on the unit circle, when we have a... Um, uh, a triangle with um, an angle of pi 6, that the x-coordinate is like root 3 over 2, and the y-coordinate is, like is like 1 over 2. Now, this is the same triangle, the 30, 60, 90 degree triangle, but rotated. So now our angle is 60 degrees instead. Remember, 60 degrees is the same as pi over 3. And so what we can see is that our radius, or our hypotenuse, is going to be 1. And then across from the 60 is that root 3 over 2. And then now across from the 30 is the 1 half, which means that in a pi over 3 angle on the unit circle, then we have an ordered pair of 1 over 2 and root 3 over 2. Notice that um, sometimes, well, what I'll do sometimes is I'll call this one kind of like the medium one. And this one here I call sometimes the short one because it's shorter than this tall one here. The medium one's going to fall right smack dab in the middle between the axes. The short one's going to be closer to the x, and the tall one is going to be farther away from the x. Um, and these are really the families that you need to know. If we reflect these triangles into all four quadrants, which we'll do next time, we're going to have a family around the unit circle. And then we can assign ordered pairs to all of the angle measurements. So this wants us real quick just to find the point on the unit circle that corresponds to the angle. And the first one is 4 pi over 3. And so when we think about this over 3, notice that oh, I should circle it in the right color. This over 3 is in the tall family. And so because it's in the tall family, that means that the ordered pair is going to have those points in it, 1 half and root 3 over 2. But let's think about where this 4 pi over 3 is going to fall. This is like 1 and 1 thirds pi. So that means I'm going to go 1. And 1 third is not quite a half. It's going to land in this quadrant. In the third quadrant, think about the ordered pairs. You have negative x and negative y. So that's what we're going to then put on these ordered pairs. We're going to make each of those negative. So essentially, that's kind of what we're doing. The first thing we're going to be doing is determining which family it's in. And the second thing we're going to be doing is determining the sign based on what quadrant it lands in. Let's do that for number 10. Number 10, we have 5 pi 6. I look at this pi 6, and this is my short family. The short family has ordered pairs of root 3 over 2, 1 over 2. So let's see where pi six, 5 pi 6 is. Well, that's not quite 1 pi. So 5 pi 6 would land here in quadrant 2. And in quadrant 2, x is negative and y is positive. So I'm going to make a negative on that x. And just to be dramatic, I'm going to put a positive on the 1 half. You don't have to put that, but I'm just being dramatic. Okay. All right. So negative 2 pi over 3. So we look here. We see that this is part of the tall family. 
So again, the tall family is going to have ordered pairs of 1 half root 3 over 2. What quadrant is this going to land in? Well, negative 2 pi thirds, so negative 2 thirds, more than a half, less than a whole. It lands in quadrant 3, which are both negative. So I'm just going to tack negative signs onto those. 11 pi sixths. Again, I see that this is in the short family. The short family has a bigger x and a smaller y. Again, we'll look at all this in more detail later. Just trying to refresh our memory from last year. And 11 pi 6, that's 1 and 5 6. So 1, 5, 6 is almost all the way around. So I'm going to land in quadrant 4, which is positive negative. X is positive, Y is negative. Um, so again, I just tack those on. And then number 3. 13, I have negative 5 pi fourths. Notice this is in that medium family. So if it's in the medium family, I know it's going to be root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. So this is going to be negative 1 and 1 fourth pi. So negative 1 and 1 fourth will land in quadrant 2. So what's that? Negative x, positive y coordinates. And there you go. So that's just a little bit about the um, unit circle. All right, just um, previewing those special right triangles. Um, sorry these were so long, um, but I just wanted to give you that little preview to be ready for our um, activity in class for tomorrow. Okay, if you have questions, send me a reminder. Have a great day.